In South Florida, only the sun is hotter than Joyce Kaufman. It's the Joyce Kaufman Show on News Talk 850 WFTL. Welcome back. So, of course, uh, the big controversy, if you can call it that, is, uh, um, you know, who wrote the speech and did they steal some lines? It's so, it's really, it's so trivial in the scheme of things, but uh, that's how the media operates. And first ladies come under a tremendous amount of pressure, uh, unmerited. It's not their you know, it's not them that are going to be leading the nation, although they may have some role in the day-to-day operations of the White House. But uh, let's get an expert on from uh, the man who wrote Unusual for Their Time on the Road with America's First Ladies. I have Andrew Oak on the line. How are you, sir? Good, Joyce. How are you today? I'm okay. You know, I felt uh, I feel particularly badly for uh, Melania Trump, who is not a first lady, but may very well be a first lady at some point in the future and already feeling how attacked you can be by the media. Of course. No, Mm -hmm. it 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 is unfortunate because, um, you know, I've been saying leading up to this convention that this really should be the Melania show. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because we know her husband. We know what we get with Donald Trump. You like him, you don't like him, you're warming up to him, whatever the case may be, Melania hasn't been out there. Uh, We don't know her like we know Hillary's spouse, like we know uh, President Clinton, President Bill Clinton. So this was her time to shine, and she did step out, and I think that her speech was well-delivered. I thought that she looked good on stage, and I thought that if the, uh, you know, if the, if the controversy and the plagiarism uh, charges and things like that hadn't come out, she would, have, she would have done very, very well. So instead of sort of you know, skipping out of the, uh, out of the convention in, in celebration, they kind of got their tails between their legs, and they've got some damage control to do. But, but it's, not, it's, not, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not insurmountable. They, they, they can get past this and, and move down the road for sure. Oh, I, I, I agree with you. But uh, I didn't know that there had been a previous first lady who was not American-born until your book. Uh, that is correct. Louisa Catherine Adams. And, you know, to think of it back at the time when this was going on, she was the, she was the wife of John Quincy Adams. And, and she had not stepped foot in America until John Quincy Adams brought her back here. She was born in London in 1775. Her father was a colonist living in Maryland. And uh, her uncle was actually the first governor of Maryland. And then, then he happened to be over in London to meet uh, her, her mother, and, and had, uh, she was born there in London. And then the Revolutionary War breaks out, and they go over to France, which is where, uh, you know, in, in that area that John Quincy Adams meets her working in his father's administration. But, but at the time, uh, uh, John Adams and, and Abigail Adams weren't really in favor of the marriage because they thought it would, it would taint his political career. They didn't, they didn't think being married to a foreigner, you know, as, as America was trying to really, really get their, get their roots as, as a new country and establish some, uh, uh, some, some uniqueness of their own, this was seen as, as a bit of a political albatross. But now, you know, we, we've grown, and, and Melania brings to the table an international flair. She brings youth. She brings beauty. She's got philanthropic endeavors. So um, she really could be a, a, a world stage uh, celebrity uh, in a political sense, like, like a Jacqueline Kennedy. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think that she has exhibited already a pretty even temperament. She's uh, able to chuckle about her husband's obvious uh, uh, drama, as she referred to it, or, or need for a big stage. I mean, that whole entrance with, <laughs> with uh, you know, him coming out uh, to introduce her was, you know, Celebrity Apprentice uh, on steroids. And she gets that, you know, and she kind of poo-poos it and, and laughs about it, which makes it easier for the American public to laugh about it. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and Melania Trump does this service for her husband. For those people that think he is too harsh or too brash or too, too you know, whatever, too Trump, um, she mellows that, as a lot of first ladies do do for their husbands and have done historically over the years. First ladies' poll numbers are always better than their husbands. <laughs> and you said very adequately and very accurately that, that we don't elect them. They're not elected officials, but they do step into roles and this is kind of a, a lot of uh, uh, the, the, the thrust of, of my book is that these women, 
They didn't go to school to be politicians. Right. They didn't go to school to be first ladies or, or in the public stage. They happened to marry men that would become president. Now, some of them, like a Helen Taft or, or a Mary Lincoln, went after men that they thought would be president, and they wanted that kind of, uh, uh, they wanted that in a husband. But others, like a Jane Pierce or, or even, you know, a... Uh, um, Gosh, you think you think to like a like a, a, a Grace uh, Coolidge or someone that, that that Mamie Eisenhower. Sure, ex- absolutely. Military wives, military mm-hmm. wives, perfect example. Historically, are thrown into this role. Uh, Margaret Taylor, uh, uh, um, Anna Harrison mm-hmm. would even say said or writ, wrote very publicly, "Leave my husband alone. We've right. done. We've done our military service. We don't want to go to the White House." But, but you know, these, these women get into these roles, and, and they either make, make the best of it or, or, or not. And sometimes they're raked over the coals uh, publicly and, and in campaigns, and sometimes not. And this is, this is a hiccup for Melania, but, but if, she goes, if she stands up and she shows she's tough, and she, she probably is a, a tough woman, you know? She'd have to be to be with him. She'll, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah, married to Donald Trump, you're not going to be a shrinking violet. Right, and you've you've already heard just about every negative thing you could possibly hear aimed at your family, you know. So it's a of course and aimed at yourself, you know. Whether she's too good looking or too dumb or fashion, I mean, she's heard all that. So she, she I think you're right. She'll be okay. But now we turn to the other side where we're not going to get a first lady out of this deal. If uh, Hillary Clinton wins, we get a what first gentleman. We, we most likely get a first gentleman. We, we don't know, and I guess that's sort of whoever's trail to blaze that gets it. It could have been, you know, Frank uh, um, uh, Fiorina, should, should uh, Carly's uh, campaign gone a, gone a little better. But, but um, we, don't, we don't know until he gets in there. But in all likelihood, he'd be the first gentleman. And, and this is unusual because he's a former president, so he's still President Clinton. Right. So... You've got Madam President and Mr. President at a state dinner, for instance. But here's what I predict for that. I don't think, very similarly to when Hillary was a senator, I don't think we see the two of them together very much. Bill is going to you know, ramp up the Clinton Foundation or whatever cause or whatever you know, ambassadorial role that he'll take, and he's going to travel a heck of a lot. And what we're going to see is something that we haven't seen since the late 1800s in the Cleveland administration. When Grover Cleveland moved into the White House, he was a bachelor. And his sister, Rose, took over the hostessing duties until he married what would be and probably will remain our youngest first lady in history, Frances Folsom Cleveland, at the age of 21. She was 21 when she became first lady. Wow. But that's the last time we had a non-spouse uh, take over the hostessing duties. And I see Chelsea Clinton coming in and standing side by side with her mother. Uh, that's a little too much estrogen for my liking, but uh, listen, it could be, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, it could be, you know, someone like Uma Abedin, who's been along by her side the whole time um, and has pretty much run the show. I could see something like that. I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about uh, Chelsea Clinton. Well, absolutely. Point being is that when, when, when a visiting dignitary, and the majority of them are men, uh, mm-hmm. presidents or prime ministers or kings or, you know, what, whatever have you, come to visit Madam President, should it be Hillary, they then hand their spouse off to the American presidential spouse. And right. that means, uh, you know, the, 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 the president of whoever would come over and hand his wife off to Bill Clinton uh-uh. and take her around Washington and entertain her. And I don't, I don't know that a lot of people are going to be too excited about it. No, I don't think anybody would be too comfortable with that image. But uh, we may soon find out, uh, you know, that yeah. there's still, uh, there's still neither one uh, have the nomination yet. Tonight, uh, Donald Trump goes from being presumptive to nominee and next week Hillary does. So, you know, I, I, there's still a chance, an outside chance we could see a Joe Biden and then we'll have Dr. Biden as first lady. Well, and it's such a long way to to November, too. I mean, this Mm -hmm. little thing for Melania will be, I mean, God knows what will happen on the other side between now and then or or, or what other news cycle will pop up. Right. There's still a lot of time. It's just, it's a shame because I really was looking forward to Melania really shining and coming out. And not that she did again. She did not do a bad job in her delivery or or what she said. It's just that, you know, now now she looks kind of silly with the 
with the, with the charges that have come up and the videos that are up and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so, well, but you're right. It's a hiccup. We have a 72-hour news cycle by tomorrow. No one will be talking about this. I, I appreciate your uh, coming on. The book is, uh, really, it's a great book, it, uh, it, or else I would not have known about the other foreign-born. And by the way, Jeb's wife would have been foreign-born as well. So the book is an unusual for their time on the road with America's First Ladies, Volume 1. Buy the book. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. All right, we got to take a break, and uh, I'm reading an article here. Apparently, Bill Cosby is 100% blind. Did you know that?